Hey everybody, it's Texas Stroker here, Lance's Performer Shop, LoneStarMopar.com. It's a little before 9 p.m. here, early October. And have I told you lately how much I appreciate you? Uh, I realize, you know, I usually put all that stuff at the end of the video, unlike every other channel on YouTube, but uh, I do some strange things. I'm fully aware of it. Uh, we come in here, we, we like like 1940s through mid-90s American stuff. <laughs> and, uh, then we go to the opposite spectrum and we bring in exotic brands from Germany and Japan. Uh, and then I also get a ton of stuff from Harbor Freight. It's, it's weird. It's who I am. And uh, I am that way unapologetically. And this ties in beautifully with that. So I cannot begin to tell you uh, how idiotically excited I am about this. And uh, unfortunately for you, I use, you know, like real factual titles and thumbnails. Maybe I won't on this one. Maybe I should like blur it out and make it suspenseful uh, and then deal with the hate in the comment section. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, what you see is, is genuine. Um, <clears throat> this, is, uh, this is something I'm actually legitimately very, very excited about. Uh, what we have is we, we've got a whole lot of ratchet strung out here and for good reason. Um, long story short, I had run into the zone, auto zone, and uh, what was I doing that day? Uh, the main order of business was to get some butt splices, ironically. Didn't have any at work, and that was sort of important. A single phased life, you know. But uh, while I'm there, of course, I grabbed a five gallon bucket hydraulic oil, and lo and behold, I saw an end cap, and it had one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. And it's not like some one-off Mopar shirt or anything. This will appeal to a wider audience. Uh, it set me back right, right under 50 bucks, probably out the door if you want to replicate this purchase. And uh, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna throw it down <laughs> right here. Oh man! Uh, again, I just, I. I feel bad because you'll think, okay, if he's excited, this has got to be like a really great deal. It's got to be some amazing tool. Uh, that's to be determined, but there's other reasons for the excitement, and we, we could be on to something, or we could have something hilariously terrible. But uh, here we go. Yes. <laughs> that is it. Uh, what you're looking at, you're probably like, what in the world that looks like you know cheap AutoZone ratchet that's exactly what it is $21.99 and $26.99 respectively uh, these are from Duralast that are both 90 tooth and my goodness uh, this is quite possibly I'm not saying this like you know jokingly or mock like I genuinely mean what I'm about to say like this is one of the most attractive ratchets I've ever seen <laughs> and, uh, there's some like uh, special interesting things about this there's some not so great things about this uh, but good grief just from a pure aesthetic standpoint a customer walking in to get butt splices and hydraulic oil uh, we'll keep tabs on how many times we say butt splices in the comment section but seriously just seeing this on the end cap like what, what in the world is that <laughs> and uh, I came up and I was like, man, this is uh, this is kind of a good looking ratchet right here. And again, a part of me feels terrible, you know, because we've got like ridiculous. Last night I was out here. We took a half inch Coke and unboxed it. And, you know, we had dozens of great ratchets over here all across the country, the world's offerings, if you will. And here we are with stuff from China. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, sadly, these are made in China. I thought they would have been Taiwan. Um, true story, and this is not to reflect poorly or negatively on this stuff, AutoZone tools, I used to get them. Uh, like 14, 15 year old me working on a project car, right? The Charger. And uh, you go in there and it's like, oh, I need like needle nose pliers, but I need them to bend to 90 degrees. Boom. You know, there's like Great Neck or Duralast or something. I still have some of that stuff and I've used that crud literally since I was 14. Uh, not all of it is like amazing quality, but uh, the vast majority of it has held up and been surprisingly decent. Uh, again, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you it's the greatest thing on earth, but decent. Uh, also, I personally have not used a Duralast ratchet outside of like car kits that friends have type of a deal but I do know people they're not like this 
Um, they're typically, I think the quarter flex is what I see most frequently. I think there's one person I know with a three eighths, but I don't know what it is with a quarter, but it seems disproportionate. But uh, these are people that actually use their tools and they really genuinely like them. Uh, it's typically like a deal where you're doing something or let's say you're dating some chick and tail lights out, you know? And she's like, hey, can you come fix this? And you show up and like she doesn't have anything and you're at AutoZone and what do you need? She probably drives some junky, you know, imports. You need like some stupid, you know, like bits set up that you have to buy too. And boom, you wind up with it. But it turns out to be a good little ratchet, right? You don't really care about it. So you use it all the time. The more you use it, you're like, yeah, this thing's actually kind of good. And uh, it's probably the best thing from that failed relationship in the end. But back to the deal, like I legitimately know people that do like Duralast ratchets. Like I said, personally speaking, I have very limited use. It's just been freak oddball roadside type of things, car show. You know, you start up to leave and somebody in the club can't start up and leave. And uh, they have Duralash stuff in their trunk, right? So uh, next thing you know, you're under the dash of a 68 Super B trying to figure out, you know, what's going on with the, you know, the ignition circuit. So right here, uh, I want to say, don't hold me to it, but I want to say that uh, some of the Duralash stuff might be made by gear wrench. Again, personally, I don't do gear wrench and never really messed around with it. Uh, lots of bad sentiments with some things that company has done, but uh, right here you see USA and you get excited, but that's distributed and again, sadly, made in China. But uh, if you do want to order these online, you can. Uh, your quarter drive part number is 51006, again, 2199, if I'm not mistaken. Jeez, it's, it's seriously a good looking ratchet. 51107 for this one, 3H drive. Again, both 90 tooth guaranteed for life. So let's let's talk about these. You're thinking, oh, what are these? Like, why are they blue? And is that why you like? Yeah, it totally is. <laughs> like, this was legitimately an aesthetic purchase. Like I said, I went in there for ding butt splices and hydraulic oil, and this was on an end cap. And uh, if I would not have seen these, I wouldn't have bought them. I didn't go in there to get ratchets. I didn't go in there to get sockets. I went in there for butt splices and hydraulic oil. So, uh, it caught my eye. Again, you know, if you're a red person, if you're a green, uh, if you do yellow or high vis or pink or purple, or you got the latest and greatest from Matco, you know, you might not care. But if you are like me, black and blue is one of my favorite color combinations, and this is extremely well done. The other thing, accent color for me, how do I pop black and blue with white? What have they done? Black and blue with white accents. Uh, the Duralast is probably going to wear off. It might be an inner material, I don't know, but it doesn't matter. If we use them, it's going to get dirty anyway. But here's the deal. When I went to grab these, uh, number one, I was thinking like, okay, I think I kind of know what's up, because you're thinking like, Geez, what is that, like a, a matte powder coat? What, in, what on earth did they do? Well, here's what they did. Uh, it's what they're going to call a hybrid shield. And if we zoom in, it's going to be an alloy steel core, which is going to be a steel-handled ratchet. Uh, and then it's shielded with tough, glass-filled nylon. And you're like, nylon? Isn't that plastic? Yeah, totally is. And you're thinking like, well, that's stupid. I, you know, I'm a man. I need a... I need a, a giant chunk of steel in my hand to be happy. Hey, not going to argue with that. Uh, that's essentially what you have in here, not to that degree, of course, but, you know, covered up. Uh, where this would ring true and be more relatable to you, and I've got some of these, but sadly I don't have them here, it's the composite ratchets. Uh, many of you probably have them, even if you don't know you do. Uh, I've brought in a half inch from Tecton, and then I've got... So I don't know how many Pittsburgh ones. Uh, you kind of get them as like a little junk throwaway ratchet. There's merit to them. Number one, if you leave this outside in a part you're working outside and it's hot, you're at the track, right? Uh, you're changing your rear end or, you know, servicing something between passes or, you know, a super oil down the track. Whatever happened, that's going to convey, it's going to absorb the heat and it's going to convey and conduct it to your hand. Not good. Same thing in the winter. And that's why I bought the composite ratchets. Uh, I'm back there, you know, I'm getting motors out of crates and whatnot. And the ratchet sits there on the ground and that thing is freaking like ice when you touch it. 
So the composite insulates that, you know, it minimizes the negativity, if you will. They're neither one like fantastic ratchets. I think they're both 72 teeth, but that's cool. That's a good thing. The other thing that people don't really ever think of, unless you have to think of this, and this is why I have more of the Pittsburgh ones, uh, it's a deal if we take this beautifully chromed SK or insert your brand of choice or Icon or Duralast, what have you, and we drop it. Uh, not a huge deal, right? But now what do we drop it on? Let's say you're working in, uh, I don't know, you, maybe you do race cars, but today, you know, it's a good customer and they're bringing by the show car. You, know, you got a 71 Cuda in the shop and the guy spent a ton of money getting it painted up over the summer. And of course, the body shop didn't get everything reconnected back together properly. You're having to diagnose it and you're having to dial the carb in or something. And you're sitting there and you're trying to work under these accessories they've added and boom, you drop it. Inner fender paint scratched that's where a composite shines in the different light so obviously hot weather cold weather it's a little bit better but on the flip side if i have to drop a ratchet in an engine bay and i've got these two this is the one i want this is not something you're going to use on like ms johnson's 98 windstar you know and she's never popped the hood a single day in her life and she's the original owner you're not as concerned with that, but like when you get, you know, maybe it's the project car, it's got the East Coast gray or, you know, <laughs> prey bombed inner fenders, not a huge deal. Uh, you know, it can be repaired, replaced pretty easy, but you know, if you're sitting there and the guy's got, you know, like a killer paint job or a custom paint job or something going on under the hood, could be something worth having. Maybe you're not going to use it often. Uh, maybe, you know, it's just every once in a while in the wintertime, you got to go outside and do something. Boom. Similarly, you know, maybe five, six times a year, you get that car in and you're like, uh oh, <laughs> you know, like, before I do anything, I've got to cellophane this thing. I've got to cover it in foam. We got to get the little car capsule in here. We can't let dust get on it. That's another place these would shine. But as I grabbed the three eights, of course, that's what I gravitate to there was something shocking about these that was not just the appearance or of course the fact that they have their hybrid shield technology look at that like i'm not playing tricks here i'm just rotating my broke thumb here <laughs> and uh, that is quite possibly one of the thinnest heads i have this is almost like i'm spinning a 9 16 wrench around like the opened or boxed end of a wrench is maybe not even this thin uh, depending on the brand that is insane and it's not even listed as a selling point <laughs> okay so what i'm gonna do here i think we've kind of covered the selling points i mean 90 tooth and i've shown you this hybrid shield stuff now in the store of course i'm weird so what do i do i pop this back why so i can do this why so i can do that after the Harbor Freight debacle, you know, I'm a believer in this. I do this anywhere. If KC Tool was a brick and mortar location, I could walk in and they had 16 Stavilla ratchets <laughs> lined up on a peg. I'm not taking the first one unless it seems to be the best. I do this at the, you know, grocery store. You know, I don't grab a loaf of bread. I'm like, okay, do, do, do. you know, I mine to the back. <laughs> and uh, I get another five days before my bread goes bad. Same thing, you know, you run into Brahms or wherever you get milk. I don't take the one in the front, I go to the back. Unless, of course, they've got kids that don't rotate stock and you kind of figure it out based on the shift. But that's just me. So, uh, this wasn't the front one. I did, I'm selective, you know, go, go through and pick out the one I want. It's not difficult when they have like three or four of these things. But uh, what we're going to do, and again, only here, are you going to see an AutoZone ratchet and Stavila pliers. <laughs> like I said, thanks for sticking around. Because uh, I realize this uh, this is not for everyone, right? So, uh, let's see here. What are we supposed to do? We'll just crack it open like that. This is the quarter. It's not as egregiously crazy. But to me, that is just a stupid good-looking ratchet. Sadly, you got the part number there, which looks idiotic. Uh, again, by the time that fails, unless these are just junk out of the box, it's going to be gone. So, uh, we're going to again cut here with the Stavillas. And then I'll crack this open. Which side is it? it? Appears to be here. 
Man, I'm always leery of these because I know this plastic will go flying and it's usually going to go in your eye when you least expect it. Ah, there we go. So, this is the crazy one. Look at that. Like, not just the aesthetics, but like, look how thin that is. So what I'm going to do here, uh, we've got some other ratchets. Like I said, we've got some really, like, desirable ones to the general population. <laughs> you know, whether that's aesthetics, brand impressions, or just, hey, I use that and I love it. It's the best ratchet. So let's let's grab some of them. Quarter drive size, we've got Stavilla. Three-eighths, we'll grab a Stavilla. Three-eighths, we'll go with a Hazette. Three-eighths, we'll throw down a Koken. And quarter drive, we'll throw down a Koken. So, what do we aim to do here? Well, there was one more. What did I do with it? There's actually three more. Sorry, more than that. Right here, a little Astro. That thing got kicked out of the cart last night. <laughs> I had to make room for the Koken half-inch. But right here, we're going full circle. This is my OG. Uh, my Craftsman USA that I got probably when I was like 12 or something. You know, I've like shorted it out multiple times, you know. And just look how far we've come. <laughs> this takes a lot of time, right? You know, like imagine a real tight quarters area. Yep, you're going to be sitting there spinning this thing for a while. And luckily, there's a square raised panel to dig into your palm while you do it. Good times. Great childhood. So, we've got that. I'm just going to throw this on the side. And I'm going to throw this back up against it. Look at that. Like, I mean, this is insane. <laughs> you know? It's just, and you think, okay, well, that's like the worst example you could possibly do. All right, this little Astro, which I've you know, hardly used. Not because it's terrible, it's just, you know, we got other options. Again, this is basically the selling point on this, if you didn't know. It's a 3 8 head, obviously, hopefully you can tell and a quarter inch body, long quarter inch body. But look how thick this is, okay? Like, let me zoom her on in. Like, do you see how thick that head is? And then I put this up and I use my thumb, like, that's insane. That is, it's genuinely a selling point for, you might hate this, you might be like, that is the worst looking ratchet, this guy is off his rocker. You might buy it because it's that thin, all right? So coming in, we'll just stick with the 3 8 We've got the Stavilla here, which again, fantastic ratchet. But look at that. I mean, it's like, they don't even advertise this as a selling point. The Z over here, 88.16, boom, roughly the same. A uh, little Koken, which is slightly thinner. It's rounded a bit more, so it's harder to tell. But again, that is a very very noticeable stick out. SKLP90, which some of you are probably familiar with. Pretty thin ratchet. Look at that. This is, it's like having a wrench. I mean, it truly is. It's, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> and, uh, if you're thinking like, well, what's the deal? What does it sound like? Now, again, I have no way of knowing. I could fall in love with these and I could be using them and they might be dead next weekend. <laughs> Okay, quality is an unknown to me, but initial impression, especially given that like I'm smitten, like I love this aesthetic, I like the feel of it even, uh, as crazy as it sounds, like this is just really good. <laughs> You know, so ignoring the unknown, which is the lifespan, the quality, uh, there's there's a lot to like here. The back drag obviously is not quite coking, uh, but to be fair, nothing on this table is. But it's not terrible. Uh, it's a huge upgrade from like an old 36 tooth Craftsman. Now setting that down, let's come in right here. Here's the quarter. Here's our little quarter style villa. I think the quarter isn't quite as impressive. In fact, style villa, they're either dead on, or I think the style villa might have like a millimeter or two. Maybe if you like took the coating off, uh, they'd be in the same. Style villa is actually thinner. Uh, Koken, again, my, all my Kokens you're going to see here are flex heads. I think it's a bit thinner. Uh, again, this guy, which again, three, it's head, quarter body. Obviously huge difference, but here's the thing the quarter is kind of in line obviously with high-end ratchets The 3 8 is not the 3 8 is essentially 
just like a tick over the quarter all right if we need to come back and make a video and mic all this we can but like this is on par with like really high quality ratchets in terms of like the head thickness this is thinner than everything here by a considerable margin so you're thinking like okay well hey you know we know your deal with ratchets and handle sizes and dainty and everything and obviously love that aesthetic <laughs> but what's the deal well I love this SK, aside from it not having the green selector switch. I just think people are still salty about that being taken off from all but the early production models. Uh, that might very well be my favorite bare metal handle. Coming in over here, though, fantastic ratchets, but there's two more that I want to highlight. This is probably the best looking ratchet I have. This was used, and then it was retired because I felt terrible. It's the Ion Blue Napros. This thing is glorious. Uh, my only regret, I've said it many times, I wish I would have bought like the socket set because yes, there were socket sets that were blue ion plated. Uh, and I wish I would have gotten like another one. I would literally, you know, I'm not really a collector. I'm more of like a tinker experimenter. Gotta find out what I like the best and I'm willing to go to great lengths to do so. <laughs> but, uh, this was reserved, I used it, and then I used it exclusively on the Mopar 10, and uh, then it just was a deal where I was like, man, you know, if I ever did something, I would never forgive myself. You can't get them. I've talked to Napros about it. Um, maybe they'll bring it back at some point in time. They do some really cool one-off stuff. The gold doesn't really appeal to me. This did. So some of you that love the gold ratchets, which if you want to see one done really well, Napros is where you need to look. But, uh, for me, this is just like killer. And this is a deal on camera, especially with the Mopar blue and the Duralast ratchet blue there and the Hazet teal. This doesn't do justice really, but I assure you, this is it's a glorious finish. It's one of those things you need to see in person. So that is, like I said, probably like the jewel, if you will. Now there's one more. Mixed feelings on this one. It's this little guy right here. And this is in the video for two reasons. <laughs> Number one, I I make a point to use this. I really do. Um, you can tell. I mean, look at the anvil. <laughs> we'll, we'll zoom in on the stupid thing. Like, you can tell she's been used. And this piece of freaking junk. Uh, it's so far a decent ratchet. I get so frustrated by it, I quit using it. And then I force myself to another time I'm out here. This is the problem right there. I, it's... There's, I've been over it ad nauseum, and I'm not going to say anymore. <laughs> We're about to escalate this past PG-13 target audience. Um, if this was a flex head, I wouldn't complain. If this was a fixed head, I wouldn't complain. I bought a locking flex head. To its credit, it locks. It just does it really well. Maybe we'll say and phrase it that way. I have ballasted this, I've soaked it, I come in like when I've got batteries charging or paint drying or it's like towards the end of the night, I'll come in literally with needle nose and just sit there like this. And I get this thing to where it'll go. And I'm like, yeah, submission. You, you finally did it. You wore off the coating or the black chrome or something and you're going to be a good little flex head now and lock where I want you. I'll come back, things seized. <laughs> it, it kills me. Uh, sometimes I've noticed like if I shimmy the head, like I don't know if you can see what that did to my thumb, but it should not be like that. It's usually easier to lock it than it is to unlock it, but, uh, and it is taking a long time to get to this point. Uh, when this thing first arrived, it was, ooh, <laughs> terrible. Now I say all that, and if you're thinking like, oh, you just brought this video, this ratchet in to trash it. No, here's the problem. This is a, this is, if the thing functioned fully, which it does not, this is like a dream ship for me. You know, I'd change the handle a little bit, you know, obviously it's not quite up as high as I would like. It's very close. Uh, it's not quite as thick, but very, very close. It's black. Again, you know, most people are going to be like, this is the best ratchet on that table by far. Look how shiny it is. That's not me. I appreciate it. It's nostalgic. I recognize it as like traditional Americana. I dig matte finish. That, like that's that's what I like. Okay, so over here, Hazet and Style Villa. You could turn that and make SK have that. Throw a right down here. Throw a snap. Whatever. 
that's just the type of chrome finish I prefer. I don't like the blingy, you know, like <laughs> I'm a trucker, but I don't have any routes. So, you know, I've like spent 6,000 hours polishing my Peterbilt's bumper. <laughs> that's not me. Same thing with cars. You know, it's like, oh, I get that chrome air cleaner and valve. No, not me. Uh, I'm blacking that stuff out or we're going body color or something. Certain times, certain applications, yes. And like I said, I do appreciate it just aesthetically that's where i fall that's why this would be up there it's unique it's blue it's just it's glorious this i love the aesthetics of as much as i hate everything else i love the aesthetics of it i figure if i could use it enough we'd probably have the head fail but that's another story but like if i could get star villa to crank one of these out you know like black chrome and blue like i'd be all over it if coken did it i'm right there like that's how do you improve this coken ratchet you make it black and blue for me you know obviously the handle some other things but this is like an aesthetic i hate the gold that's another thing uh but the black and the blue it's like on point for me okay if matco came and i said man we're sorry we gave you this thing that didn't shouldn't have passed quality control pick a ratchet I'm not going to get a chroma. Well, I might if I want a lock and flex it because I seriously wonder if it's the black chrome being too thick that impacts this. But if everything functioned, I would pick black chrome again. I'd need to see the nickel in person, but I'm like 90% sure we're going to go black chrome. It's aesthetically what I like. This is sort of like between the Napros and the Matco here in terms of like aesthetics. But even though this seems cheap, and it is cheap, Okay, you got like super high-end Japanese. Um, these are actually more expensive than Snap-on most of the time, so very high-end American, at least on the price scale. Aesthetically, I like this. <laughs> if Matco could do this, if Snap-on would do like this is where, aesthetically, I, that's my dream, right? So something along those lines. The other reason this is here, though, is the Matco, as much as there's wrong with it, one of the things they did very right is the thin head. Like, I don't know that that gets enough credit, um, but it is a very, very thin head. Uh, I would say these two are about even. Maybe the Matco is a bit under, maybe just by the coating, but they look dead on to the naked eye. So... As much as I bag on that ratchet, there are things I love about it, namely the aesthetics and the thin head, <laughs> right? This has a very, very, this is like Matco thin. Think of it that way. And then for me personally, like, yeah, sure, it's not bare chrome and, you know, it's got a different texture and feel to it. I dig it. Uh, like I said, the issue here is like how long, if this became my go-to, uh, let's say that I love it so much, I go buy another set and I keep them bagged and tagged and this becomes just a workhorse. Every day, everything. How long does it last? How well does it hold up? <laughs> I have no idea. If you're someone that uses Duralast ratchets, please chime in. If you've used these, why did you buy them? Is it because you thought, man, that's a great looking ratchet or wow, you know, hey, wh what's the deal here? Oh, hybrid technology. And you think, why would they do that? And you're like, well, I just like the way it feels. Or, ooh, you know, I just dropped that, uh, you know, my uh, favorite snap-on 18-inch ratchet in that, uh, you know, fender bay, fender of uh, Mr. Johnson's Cuda. Maybe that prompted the purchase. Maybe you were just like, well, what's this? And then you turned it sideways and you're like, good Lord, it's super thin. That's a must-buy. How is it held up? Because, again, I cannot answer anything I could say, like, honestly... It feels decent, but I mean, what does decent translate to? You know, that's the that's the problem right now. It's a true unknown. So yes, out of everything here, there's things that are known quantities. I've had tons and tons of experience with these other ratchets, minus the Astro, which it's been fine. I just don't use it often. Uh, everything else we've used, even the Napros, the other Napros I brought in to replace this gets used all the time. The Matco, I force myself to use. <laughs> like... I can vouch for those. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty good. Even this guy, you know, no, the tooth count is nothing like anything else on this table, but it's not broken. It's still functional. <laughs> you know, even though it's nearly started like two fires and nearly killed me once, it's still here. So that's a good thing, right? 
this is an unknown but it is a very in my opinion good looking unknown and even if you despise the blue and the black you have to at least on this 38s appreciate the thin ridiculously thin head we're about to time out there so i just went ahead and did it uh, so we wouldn't be interrupted again but i think we'll call it uh this really i mean like I don't make this stuff up like I am genuinely excited by the aesthetics of these ratchets investigating them in the store it makes sense from the composite standpoint it's a selling point to me and then when I saw how thin the head was like typically go to Harbor Freight and find those like gray handled Pittsburgh's at least I think that's how they are maybe they've switched to a green handle now order one in from Tecton like virtually every company on Amazon is going to have one of them the heads on those things are massive okay now i've used that tecton one at work like and the pits one of the pittsburgh's is at work uh for three eighths but the half inch tecton has been a workhorse not broken uh it's sometimes the selector shaft is an issue you know like it'll i'll be ratcheting along and just inertia like seems to spin it back and you're like what's the deal ratchet did we finally break and you're like oh no it's just dead center uh so there's little issues there but like in terms of my hand didn't freeze as bad that's <laughs> a win uh, again i don't usually have to be outside too terribly much every once in a while but i'm usually not spinning a ratchet it's more scraper issues then anyway compare those composites many of you probably have them uh, even if you like didn't even think of it but you're like hey what is that cheapest pittsburgh ratchet i have if it's gray and it seems soft it's composite <laughs> all right I assure you it is not like this it's probably about you know starting from here it's probably about that thick meaty little thing if you will so that's a huge selling point and then I know for some of you I can't be the only one just like there's the green tool gangs and you know the OG reds and everything there has to be some people like me that are like hey <laughs> you know, I don't care the brand or the country of origin that is just a good looking ratchet and that's how I kind of want you to look at this if you can. Maybe you're into Japanese tools, take Napros or Coke and put them with that aesthetic. Maybe you're into German tools, put that on Stavilla or Hazet or Ghidor. Uh, maybe you're like America or Bust, throw that on Matco or Snap-on or Mac or whatever. Um, it's just, to me, a really good looking ratchet. It seems crazy. I mean, look what we have here. And I'm going on about the aesthetics of the Duralast. It's like 26 bucks. You know, it's like the, the two of those, 47, we could probably buy multiple sets of those, you know, for granted I'm thrifty, so it might throw it off, but you get the point. Uh, I just, I can only explain it by, I love the way those things look. They don't seem terrible initially, and the head on both is very thin. The quarter turns out to be kind of, you know, on par. The 3 8 it's right there with Matco, uh, and much thinner than the others. So it's just, I'm excited, man. I am genuinely excited about these things. So I think I will leave it there. Again, the most important thing you can do if you have experience with Duralast ratchets, particularly these two, if not, cite what they are. Uh, if they're made in China or Taiwan, if you know who the OEM was, like if it's a gear wrench, or if you're like, oh, this thing dates back to the year 2000, it was made by so-and-so, uh, provide as much information as you can to showcase your expertise. But man, these are just, I don't know why, but I love it. I love the aesthetics. I also like the length. You know, like this SK is a really nice length for a 3 8 ratchet. This is a little longer. This is a great length for quarter drive. When I complain about Coke and Instaville and Jose at the lengths, this is kind of what I would like, right? So, yes, I know this has huge upsides in certain situations, but you wouldn't hear me complain like, oh, this thing is just too small. Would I like it meteor around the handle? Sure, but like the overall length, I'm good with that one. So, yeah, uh, like I said, uh, why am I so excited? It's just, I can't explain it. It just looks good. And uh, now that they're open and I've showcased them and they're functional here, I can use them. If these things break, I will let you know. If they're just too glorious for me to use, I'll, I'll let you know that too. But uh, man, just, I don't know why. I just, I love that aesthetic and it feels good in hand. It's got the selling points we covered. What else can I say? So, 
With that said, I do hope you enjoyed the video. Again, timestamps and links. I always put that stuff down below. I don't get a dime if you buy stuff from AutoZone. Don't get a dime if you know Dura last season uptick in sales. I'm just the idiot that was stupidly excited when I saw them on an end cap when I went in for butt splices and hydraulic oil. So, <laughs> with that said, I genuinely do thank you for watching, sticking around with me. I hope you enjoy this stuff as much as I do. If you go out and grab these, let me know what you think of them. Even if you check them out in the store and set them down, pick them up and use them daily, come back, let everyone know what you think. With that said, well, StarMopars.com is a website. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all three, at Lone Star Mopars. If you hadn't subscribed, I encourage you to do so, trying to beat the card. Jump your charger across the creek, ring the bell, grab your dear last ratchet. YouTube just might notify you about new videos every Wednesday and Saturday, 9 a.m. Texas time. Thanks for watching. Hope I catch you back here for more action from the shop. Mad gum. Uh, we still had 11 seconds left. I thought it was going to time out. I knew how much was on the card, and sometimes it goes over, so my bad. But as I turn gloriously finished with 11 seconds, I realize there's one thing I forgot, and that thing is right here, an assortment of sockets. We're going to get started. We got quarter drive here. I think that's all I brought over, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, this is an old school U.S. made SK. I just always like to check fitment, especially with Chinese stuff. Sometimes, you know, it can be terribly wonky. This is not great. <laughs> this is uh, definitely not great, but it would be functional. And uh, there she goes. We'll come in now. Again, U.S. made SK. We'll grab a little Koken, 9 sixteenths, which is about as big as you'd probably go. And that's not good. <laughs> it's a little crunchy fitment there. So maybe this is raining on my parade a little. Uh, another thing I'm noticing, if I zoom in here, maybe it's just the Koken, maybe it's just this ratchet. Uh, you see, not very well, but there's a gap there between the socket and the ratchet. If I press down, it goes away. And did you see it come up? <laughs> like, yeah, you heard the audible click there as it popped up. Let me go back to this guy and see what happens. Maybe that's the downturn. So the SK seats very well. It doesn't drop down a level, although I push and can feel <laughs> the internals moving. Huh. So like, pay attention, I can't get it to seat anymore. So it does pop out as well, it just didn't do it there. It was still locked on, it's not like it was gonna, well, in fact, we'll go back to the coke and, so right there, it's fully seated. Okay, I know that's a little blurry. As I'm turning it, it popped. I think if my thumb wasn't there, you would have heard it better. So it's out some. It's not gonna come off, it's still on the detent. Uh, that Koken has a very tight fitment compared to the SK. Uh, this random one I grabbed, my 12 point that I somehow wound up with from Wrights. Let's stick that on. It's seated all the way. There's the click. Hmm. It's seated. Pulled that out. Strange. See, I don't know what the deal is there. So, maybe there's some problems, I don't know. Um, I always like to check that stuff. Am I going to go buy Duralast sockets? No. Unless they put them in that color scheme and encapsulate them. Maybe we would then. But, stand, no. Um, we're set. We're good with what we've got. <laughs> I'm going to call it good. Uh, but yeah, so that's just a little food for thought there. So, I don't want to drag this video out too much longer, but I... Did have the sockets here intentionally to test fit them, and uh, we'll call it good. I'll run. I know some of you are like, what about three eighths? Well, hang on. All right, we'll go through a random gauntlet here in three eighths land just to be thorough. <laughs> up first, Viha Torx. So that's seated all the way. It's not really like releasing. I can pull it forward, but it'll go right back. The quarter, it's like a mechanical, kind of like that. Strange. <laughs> Let me grab this guy real quick and see what happens here. Okay, that's all the way down. I can't get a mechanical release to a next level. There is no next level. With the SK, the socket is on or the socket is off. Okay, that's how, that's how I remember things. 
Uh, if anyone's gonna have an issue here, it would be Matco. Let's let's see what it does. It's on. Okay, it ejects too. Weird. Do I just never pay attention to this stuff? <laughs> like, what what's wrong in my life? Uh, the SK seems to be how I remember things. Let's grab the Craftsman. It's fixed because it's quick release. Very weird. Astro. Well, this is. There's no, again, I think with the quick release, we're probably going to be set. Now let's confirm that with Stavilla. No play there. Koken, what are you going to do? That's totally on. This is like the SK. It's set. Okay. There's no, like, second level, pre-release, whatever. <laughs> it just goes. Uh, the Hazette. It's on, and there's no... Nothing else. Okay, we're not crazy. <laughs> there for a second, I was like, what's the deal? So, Stahl Villa, beautiful, thank you. Re reaffirmed my sanity. Let's come in now, and I, for our smorgasbord, we grab this little take it easy tool finder, Vera. So, this is a Taiwanese made. People always think these are Czech. They're not. They're Taiwan. Uh, let's see what the Duralast is going to do. We'll even line up the Baldy tent this time. Whoa. Okay, uh, that's egregious. So we're down all the way, and you can see it's like I kind of wonder if that's the issue. Maybe the placement of the ball, with this three-quarter socket and that yellow, and the lighter color of the sidewall. You're really seeing this. Oh boy, this is a deal. Where I mean, you're gonna have a half thirteen bolt or half inch bolt, I should say. Yeah, that's a lot of side load for a small percentage of the anvil. <laughs> right? Like, you don't have a lot of real estate here, but when you're like... Did you see it fight me there? Like, I go to put this sucker on. Again, we're lining up the detents. And there you go. I was simply trying to turn, and I was going the wrong direction. Check it out. I'm only going to turn. And instant ejection. Hmm. Well, this is unfortunate, but good. Um, like I told you in the video, you know, maybe there will be issues with these. Maybe they'll break in two weeks. That's not a good sign. Uh, <laughs> does that change that I love the aesthetics? No, it does not. But it does give me reason to worry. So, uh, semi-deep coking, which I accidentally, this is my extra. I somehow screwed up an order a long time ago. Um, that's what we're having issues with on our quarter. Boom. Popping. Hmm. I'm thinking, given like, let me showcase this. Okay, we're going to take the same semi-deep. We're going to take our little trusty coke in here. Do you see how I do it? it's on? Okay, this is not quick release. This is fixed head. And there's no like, bloop, pop out. Okay, this is correct. All right. The Hazette, the Stavilla. The the Matco is incorrect. The SK, that's how things are, alright? Uh, this is uh this is very worrisome. Because <laughs> if you've got an oversight there that does this, I'm not confident with anything going on inside. The aesthetic's beautiful, but the selector switch now is in question. The internals now in question, like you know? So I don't know if it's the housing, I don't know, we could probably take it apart and figure it out. I think she's still going to function. Um, maybe, as I look at this, if you come in here on the anvil, okay, like there usually it's a square drive, right? And this is square, it's kind of chamfered. But you come down, you've got your ball detent, and then look right there. Do you see what I see? Kind of like the pedestal stand-up. All right, now I'm going to come in here. I'm going to grab the Stahl Villa. And what do you see? You see different chamfering, of course, but you come down, and you see how it's square, okay? Like they just machine that flush 90 degree to the surface. <laughs> like if we took a square, we would go straight down and straight out and it's 90 on the anvil obviously you know there's like the retainer but just anvil exclusive 90 degrees coking let's take a gander and dial that in for you what do i know it was fine the way it was 
<laughs> so back in focus now. Oh, geez. I'll get my more of my hand up there. Alright, so it's the same thing though. Like you come in and you can kind of see a contour that you think is what you have on the Duralas, but it's 90 degrees in, 90 degrees out. This is not. This is gonna be easier to see than the quarter drive. You see this now that we've looked at some square ones? Like, let me center punch for the win. <laughs> right here. That, like, this is going woo to exaggerate it. Like, the Koken, Stavilla, Hazette, they're straight across. SK, straight. This one's like, woo, ride the hill, <laughs> roller coaster. I think that's where we have our issue. Um, if this was up a little bit higher and that was seated inside, it wouldn't be an issue. However, the head would not be near as crazily thin, and that might be production oversight. This is what I'm sadly <laughs> kind of like. Watch my finger here. If I go in, I go up. Okay. It's if you had this ratchet, go to the store, pop it out like I showed you. My finger starts there, and then I go down. Let me try to get something where you can see it a little easier. We're here. You see, I'm like not up against the anvil. I'm like out here instead of here. That's because I'm on this ridge. Now watch the point of the punch. Do you see how it went down and it's back up? It's like we're sliding down a hill. We're running back up a hill. I think that's where the issue lies. And uh, I didn't intend to take this from like one of the happiest feel good videos of the year to uh, supreme disappointments, but well, that's what it is. The good news is I turned and saw my collection of sockets here and was like, oh yeah, I was going to test fit sockets because that's what I do. Glad I did. Uh, because again, it's important. Like if you went out and you're like, oh, this guy's so excited. I, he's right. This is beautiful. I'm black and blue guy myself. And you ran into AutoZone, you're going to throw a socket on there and you're probably going to have the same issue now. Maybe these are lemons. Maybe there's a batch. Maybe if you bought these when they first came out, they're not like that. Maybe this is the first batch. Maybe the next batch it'll be machined and taken care of. I don't know. The good news is if you take it into a store, they'll replace it. The bad news is I don't know how long they're going to have these, right? You know, like, I hope it's a staple. I hope they make a half-inch drive. I hope they fix the anvil. <laughs> it's, uh, there's no guarantee there. So, you know, if it lasts you six months and you go back in the store, maybe these aren't there. And they try to just give you a standard ratchet or something. Who knows? I uh, can't predict the future. But uh, here on the Craftsman, it's even 90 degree. It's going to look like it's not, but you've got to realize how tall this anvil is comparatively. In fact, let's do that. So it's very close, these two, but where you've got the difference is right there. Okay, which this is not going to work well for viewing. But the Craftsman is a good bit taller, especially with that recess factored in. And that recess takes any round portion of that that's not perfectly 90 degrees, and it makes it a non-issue. The higher-end ratchets here, aside from the Matco, uh, all do what I kind of want them to do. This Matco, I think I see the issue on it. So you're 90 degrees on the sides looks like a true 90 but right here you've got that ridge going around the corner and instead of like facing that off and having a 90 degree pad here they just kind of left a pillar for lack of better terms and when i push this on that's why this pushes back now it doesn't eject it mid-flight like that one does but see how that's fully seated and then it kicks up this is a little bit more confident than the Duralast, but I think that's the design on this one. That's why it has that sort of like spring effect. Whereas if we come in, we throw it on the SK, it's a, it pushes off initially, but then it's rock solid on the anvil. And again, if you take a look at the SK, like it's one, it's a tall anvil, but then it goes all the way down. Okay. So yeah, I think I think that's what it is. So quick release, we don't seem to have any issues with those. But like coming in, coking on the coking. 
boom, right? Rock solid, no difference. Pay attention one more time to the Duralast. I'll let it focus a little. Sound bad? Stay and then it pops. So, yeah, I think that is what the issue is there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, you would buy this for aesthetics, for a road ratchet. Like, you got to think also, this is another selling point. If you drop something, might have an easier time finding that. Um, might not. It kind of depends on the lighting, I guess, and your, where you're at and where you dropped it. But, oh. I'd say if you like the aesthetics of it, go for it. I would say if you're curious about these or you think like, hey, that thin head, I don't care about the socket popping a little bit. Or man, you know, I, I don't have a composite ratchet. That would be great, you know, to protect from paint. I work on a lot of high-end cars or uh, sensitive equipment maybe even. Go ahead and pull the trigger. Uh, if you aren't crazy about the aesthetics and you just want to experiment, sure. Uh, for everyone else, maybe give it some time. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, see if there's like a revision to that design so it's not a huge deal it's really not but it's not a good deal either so we're gonna take the detent here and I'll spin it to viewing side we're gonna take the Vera's detent and we're gonna offset it 180 degrees hmm there's the pop out that gives it a bit more play, obviously. It's just kind of a strange deal. <laughs> so, I'll leave it at that. Man, if only I'd have ended this video and not put those sockets on. But a uh, little dampened spirit here, but I still love the aesthetics of it. So, it's kind of a win. Plus, uh, you know, we're, we're going to keep them. We'll see how they do. <laughs> So, uh, is it the perfect ratchet? No, it's not. But aesthetically, it's pretty dadgum cool. So, uh, we'll run with that. Like I said, man, if if you could take this, which it's pretty close to what I love uh, in terms of like ideal aesthetics, and I do love the matte chrome. But like, if they would ever do like special editions, kind of like Napros, where we get like a black chrome or something, or you know, something weird like that. Like, ooh. Like, I would probably hate a lot of them, but something like that, I would be all about it. So, uh, with that said, maybe we'll daydream about that tonight. And uh, on that note, I probably better get inside, work out, shower, and uh, edit some videos. So, yeah, this got a significant uh, time of content added to it. My apologies there. Maybe you enjoy it, maybe you don't. But, like I said, I don't make a dime if they sell ratchets or don't sell ratchets. I'm just here kind of conveying excitement and then disappointment when I sadly have to. So uh, it's not a huge deal, but like I said, it's it's definitely noticeable. Quick release ratchets, we didn't have that issue with anything. Again, if you do have the play, it's locked. I think that's just the way they have that anvil designed, I think is where the issue is coming from. So anyway, I don't spend a ton of time taking ratchets apart or studying them, but just a quick inspection, I think that's the issue. So. Once again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you pull the trigger, if you find an issue, if you know like, oh, I know exactly what that is, or man, you're crazy, it's going to work fine. Feel free. Uh, leave a comment, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> it's, uh, at the end of the day, it's a great looking ratchet. It's just maybe not perfect. So we'll leave it at that. Once again, thanks for watching. Hope I catch you back here for more action from the shop.